In the early 21st century, a third world war led to global devastation. The survivors established Libria, a city controlled by the oppressive Tetragrammaton Council. Citizens were forced to take daily prosium two injections, restraining feelings and enforcing compliance. Art and pets were banned, and those who defied these rules were called sense offenders and faced execution, blamed for causing wars. The Council deployed skilled enforcers known as clerics trained in gun cata to ensure compliance. Beyond the urban limits lies the Nether, a forsaken territory that was a hub for illegal activities. Clerics John and Errol, along with their specialized team, launched an operation against the rebel faction the Underground. As the team confronts rebels barricaded in a building, John, armed in both hands, charges inside while his comrades engage in a shootout outside. In the dark, he stands unharmed as rebels fire at him. When the gunfire ceases, John utilizes gun cata, a technique blending geometry and psychology, to take down the rebels with precise strikes while staying safe. After everyone is deceased, upon searching the building, they uncover a vast art collection, including the Mona Lisa. Confirming their authenticity with a scanner, John orders the artwork to be set ablaze. During their return, Errol discreetly takes a book, intending to handle the evidence privately. In the city, Father appears on screens, praising the prosium system for achieving peace, earning cheers from the public. Father consistently appears on screens, yet he remains elusive in person. Upon his return to headquarters, John promptly reports to Vice Council Dupont, earning commendation. Intrigued by John's ability to detect strong emotions, Dupont inquires about his family. John, emotionless, reveals his wife's arrest and incineration as a sense offender. Dupont reprimands him for not recognizing his wife's criminality as a cleric. Later, John becomes suspicious of Errol's actions and discovers Errol's negligence in logging evidence for weeks involving the Book of Today. Determined to investigate, John ventures into the nether and catches Errol perusing the book in a deserted chapel. Confronted by John, Errol mourns humanity's emotional loss, longing for a return of feelings. When Errol tries to reach his weapon, John acts faster, ending Errol's life. John conceals Errol's face with a book before meeting Brandt, who will now be his partner. John aspires to match his skill. Later at home, John's son Robbie mentions seeing a crying boy and considers reporting it. Instead of Dad, Robbie addresses John by name. During a dream, John recalls the day his wife was arrested due to being a sense offender. The memory still haunts him, and the next morning, an accident shatters his prosium vial. Robbie urges his father to replace his prosium, but the Equilibrium Center is closed due to terrorist threats, directing people to another sector. When Brandt arrives for a mission, John conceals his lack of prosium. They visit a woman named Mary and raid her house, and John hesitates when he shoves her into a looking glass, recalling his wife. After the mirror is destroyed, they find an illicit room. Mary grabs an officer's gun and aims it at John. He prevents Brant from shooting her, opting to use her to know about the underground. Later, Mary undergoes questioning at headquarters. John inquires about other rebels, but Mary redirects the conversation, questioning his life's purpose. He responds, claiming it's to maintain their society, but Mary exposes the circular nature of his reasoning. Later, he observes recruits training to ease his mind. That night, he skips his injection and has a nightmare of Errol's incineration. Waking, he peels away the window tint, experiencing the sunrise's beauty, evoking emotions like awe. Rushing to the bathroom for the syringe gun, he hesitates. Before work, John drops prosium vials, destroying them. He touches another person's hand without his glove, savoring the sensation. In the office, he reorganizes his desk, claiming it's an optimization effort when questioned by Brandt. On their next assignment in the nether, the officers confront rebels. In the heat of the gunfight, Brandt defends John from an attacker. John inadvertently shares a moment with the fallen man, feeling troubled. As the officers eliminate the rebels, John discovers a hidden room with illicit items. Among them, he discovers Beethoven's Ninth Symphony on vinyl and spins it, deeply moved. Afterwards, they destroy everything, but John keeps a book. 
they come across puppies, puzzled by their presence, wondering if the rebels considered them food. Brandt orders the officers to eliminate the dogs, and John hesitates but ultimately complies. Amid the grim task, a puppy escapes and seeks comfort from John, who protects it, claiming it needs testing for diseases. Later, John questions Dupont about the rebels' killings, advocating for arrests and interrogation as per the law. Nevertheless, Father's decree demands the immediate elimination of rebels upon discovery. John secretly keeps a ribbon from Mary's belongings and visits the nether, unaware of Brant's surveillance. Officers surround him, requesting his ID, which he stashed within his jacket. The puppy, now his companion, remains loyal as John finds himself in a tight spot. After an officer apologizes for the mistaken identity, John's puppy inadvertently alerts them to the trunk's contents. Subduing John, he manages to disarm the officers and swiftly dispatch their backup. He kills them and escapes with the puppy. The following day, John conceals his prosium vials behind the bathroom mirror, anticipating a sword training session with Brant. As their duel rages on, Brant teases John about the mysterious nether murders, celebrating the slain officers and predicting a crackdown on rebels by the council. The fight ends in a draw, and the duo ventures into a new nether sector. While exploring and clashing with foes, John encounters rebels. He guides them to safety, defending them from approaching officers. After defeating the officers, he searches for the rebels only to find they've been captured. Brandt, expecting this, asks John to execute the rebels, but John declines, leaving it to Brandt. John then approaches Dupont, expressing readiness to serve father against the resistance. Dupont assigns him the mission to dismantle the underground. Later, John apologizes to Errol's body in the morgue. John stumbles upon Errol's photos, noticing one with freedom. He questions Mary about Errol, showing the picture revealing their connection. When Mary stays silent, John admits to Errol's death, provoking a hostile reaction. Amid the struggle, John's emotions resurface as he recalls his wife. Examining the photo and its inscription, he recalls the Freedom Reading Room where Errol met Jürgen. John clears the room, coercing the teacher. John encounters Jürgen, who discloses rebel surveillance. Together they reach the underground, where hidden treasures await in the rebel's secret life. John undergoes a polygraph test to confirm his emotions. When Jürgen mentions Mary, the polygraph goes wild. Jürgen confesses knowing that John has Mary's ribbon and urges him to fall in love with her. John points out that Mary faces imminent incineration. Contemplating his role in the resistance, Jürgen asks him to eliminate Father. Leaving the underground, John is apprehended by guards and brought before Dupont, who suspects him of ceasing prosium use. John claims he's been trying to contact rebels and vows to intensify his efforts. Back home, John discreetly stashes a vial behind a mirror and checks on his sleeping children. Robbie wakes, and John pretends to inspect his daily syringe. Robbie surprises John by addressing him as Dad. The following day, John visits Mary, who finally grasps his non-compliance with injections. Recognizing John's confusion, she offers comfort by touching his hand. Later, John meets Jürgen and explains the impossibility of killing Father, who's been secluded for years. Jürgen assures John that the rebels will help dismantle Proteum Labs once emotions return, relying on human nature to win. John reluctantly agrees, cautioned by Jürgen not to witness Mary's execution, as it will add to his burden. Back in his office, John inadvertently sees the preparations for Mary's execution on screens. This prompts him to search for footage of his wife's death. He's appalled to observe himself showing no reaction as his wife perished in flames. Driven to make amends, John rushes to rescue Mary. Tragically, he arrives too late, with Mary already inside the chamber, and the machine's turbines engaged, preventing any interference due to the risk of an explosion in the streets. As Mary's life slips away, John battles to suppress his tears, yet ultimately surrenders and flees outside, overcome with emotion. Just then, Brandt apprehends him and, in a distressing display, subjects John to a public beating before taking him to Dupont. Brandt accuses John of complicity in Mary's death and the murders in the nether, 
But John counters by reminding DuPont of his mission to expose a traitor within the clerics, pointing the finger at Brandt. DuPont examines the gun used in the officer's killings, and it turns out to be Brandt's firearm. Bewildered, Brandt checks his weapon and realizes that John had swapped them the previous night. In an attempt to conceal the truth, John claims that Brandt confiscated his gun during the arrest. Dupont orders Brandt's arrest and informs John that the law mandates a search of his home. John pretends to agree, feigning disappointment at not yet meeting Father despite his role in undermining the underground. Later, he rushes home to retrieve concealed vials, only to discover a space behind the mirror. Robbie's confession about hiding vials to protect his father and his family's decision to stop taking injections prompts John's support. Since their mother's passing, he and his sister have ceased their injections. Later, John collaborates with rebels, revealing their hideout to the council, earning praise. At the meeting, the council tests John by disarming him through questioning. A surprise guest, Brandt, proposes asking the cleric for the weapon on a screen, and Father unveils his long con scheme. He aimed to infiltrate the underground, needing someone like John, who mirrors the rebels. Father discloses his true identity as Dupont, hiding behind recording since the real father's demise years ago. The council elected John as father's successor, enraging him. He swiftly draws hidden guns, unleashing his expert marksmanship on everyone. John vows to confront Dupont, shooting the screen and embarking on a rampage, eliminating any guards in his way. Upon reaching Dupont, Brandt, acting as a bodyguard, engages him in a sword duel. John engages in a determined battle, swiftly defeating Brandt. Dupont joins the fray, initially holding his own, but John eventually gains the upper hand, forcing Dupont to beg for mercy and confess his emotions. Despite the plea, John coldly eliminates Dupont with a single shot to the head. As John exits, he smashes the machine, spreading Father's messages. Rebels take this as a cue, launching attacks on Prosium factories citywide. Locals realize it's time to rebel against the system. 